are getting our vinyl lester, um, four 20 gallon uh, containers of that. And we are also getting the meth acrylate right now. So it's a very, very good day. Very exciting day because we finally have our chemicals and finally have our stuff now. That's a tight fit. That's very tight fit. That's what she said. Any building materials. <laughs> After eight years of the nomadic life involving crossing oceans in a 34 foot saber, refitting an aluminum boat, and then taking that to the Arctic Circle, we're back at it again with a brand new build. This is Matt, and I'm Jessica. Make sure to hit the subscribe button and join us every week as we start our newest project of building a 42-foot catamaran from the ground up. Uh, now that the bonding adhesive has arrived, we have to figure out a way to get this panel up and out of here um, so we can clean up that gel coat, again, where this flange, where these two pieces meet, and also uh, so we can apply, of course, the adhesive itself. Um, to do this, we were originally thinking about removing it, doing the same way that we put it in here, having friends come over and uh, just kind of plop it up into place as needed. But when you're dealing with that adhesive, it really, I don't think it's going to work extremely well. So what we want to do is, A, we want to be self-sufficient and be able to do it ourselves. But the other thing, too, is we think just raising it vertically and then bringing it right back down is going to be the best approach. So we think the best way is to kind of make... Um, kind of like a crane to lift up this whole area. And how we're gonna do that is we're gonna use these two 12 foot pieces. We have another one laying here. We're gonna attach blocks to the top of it. Um, and we're gonna use the frame that is supporting this piece as one end of it. And then the other end is going to be the door and these plywood pieces here to kind of support this other end. We'll have a spreader bar between the two of them, which will then attach to those top points and we should be able to raise this thing just vertically and drop it back down. Nice thing is these weigh probably 120, 130 pounds a piece. They're not extremely heavy. So it's gonna be a good test on lightweight pieces to see if that whole approach works. I think that's probably enough meat to move forward. I'm putting a rope through this, so trying to round out the edge a little bit so it's not as sharp. I let Matt do all the hard work by himself because I'm busy yeah, holding a camera. <laughs> Good excuse, huh? He's basically building a boat by himself. Just because I can. There is number one. If we were building this boat outside and could easily fit a gantry craner on both sides of the hull, that's probably the route we would have taken to get these panels lifted. And although there are smaller versions we could work around for the size of the tent we're in, this solution seemed just as easy since we were only lifting up 150 pound panels. Mm -hmm. but up there obviously 
And then what I'll do is I'll attach just two temporary screws in here mm -hmm. just to hold it in place. But I'll also tie it off here to give us a little more strength then. Okay. So we don't have to worry about it at all. these as well and then just maybe even tie it up there but that's I mean as it's it is it's actually plenty strong for 120 pounds you know it's not a ton that we're asking of this okay it shouldn't be a problem As we went along, we were trying to keep our system easy enough that we could do repeat rounds of removing it and placing it back together. We only had enough boards and blocks to do one whole side at a time. And not only that, we wanted to be able to do many practice rounds on each side before we got to the big day of using the bonding agent on the flanges. Call that one okay. I'll get that other side and should be set to kind of just pull this up, see what it does. Wind's blowing that thing. I back know. And forth. Yeah, we're gonna need to scrap this. So I will need another piece of rope to be able to tie on there. Um, oh, there's actually one right down there. Okay. As always, we are using every structure we pop possibly have available to us to lift these pieces. Um, the door is acting as kind of a brace and support and our cleat as to what we're attaching our couple on to. Um, this is going to just this little loop here. And then as we tighten it, it's pulling through that block, lifting up this board and uh, lifting up there. So it's a little kind of a strange system, kind of a Rube Goldberg type uh, experiment here, but it should work. It should. I took out the tension on that, do the same thing over on this side, and once we unbolt this, it should, again, should slide straight or relatively straight up and we can kind of adjust it as needed and get the proper angle. But quite frankly, even if it is moving a little bit side to side, it isn't that big of a problem for us. We just need space so I can grind that area out and then uh, be able to control, the, uh, control it as we're lowering it down with the method of it on it. And now is going to be the beginning to find out if our hard work has paid off. We're going to go and unbolt what's holding it in place right now, give a tug on those pulleys, and see if she comes up. All the way off. Manually. Okay, it's off. Okay, now I'm ready. Yep. All right, can you undo it? Uh, no, I cannot undo it yet. All right, can you undo it? Let me check. So far, so good. 
And lastly, the forward bolt. It looks like we're pulling up on this too much. Do me a favor, grab that and pull down. There we go. Ooh. She's airborne. Okay. All right, so far the pulleys hold under in place. Have you controlled this? Okay. And then I'll, uh, I'll do the front one. Okay. It'll be easier. You do a couple of rounds on your side? Yep. Here we go. All right, stop. All right, you go again. Okay. She's free of the hole. Yeah! Yay for Matt and his ingenuity. So we got it actually set up now, uh, far enough that I'm gonna be able to hopefully clean this all out, get rid of that uh, gel coat here, get a good bonding surface, then also scuff up the inside from here of that flange, and we should be all set then for a couple days from now to actually do the methacrylate. Bonding. Now that we had found out how to raise and lower the hull side to apply the methacrylate adhesive once we were ready to bond, Matt was going through to further prepare the surface. Although some production facilities will do a bond of gel coat to gel coat, the best and most secure way is to do a fiberglass to fiberglass bond, which is of course what we'd like to do for our boat. The first step Matt did was to go through with an orbital sander to remove the gel coat from the main surface. In the area where the upper flange meets the hull, he found it easiest to get in that small area with the file sander. I'm thinking that pretty soon it's going to be time for me to build up some muscle and do the sanding and grinding as well. As you may be able to tell, it is raining horrible out right now, a lot of wind. Um, there's a bad storm that kind of came through. And I just finished grinding this section. Jess is on the Viking editing uh, videos right now. We got some walkie-talkies, but of course we can turn them on. Sorry, I'm not gonna go out there and grab her, so I'm gonna try and actually lower this down myself and see how that works out. And then I'll move the whole structure over and raise up the next one. Yeah, we'll see. If I get into too many complications, then I'm going to have her. right down into place. Again, this is a lightweight panel, but that's why we're practicing with this one. That's why we're doing this one first. Um, now I just need to get the bolts in on the back side or the nuts on on the back side, and then I'll be able to transfer the whole structure over and do the other one. Days like today make us very thankful that we're in a tent for this workspace. I can imagine trying to do this outside. Probably wouldn't, but now it's time. Thank you, Alex and Pete. Thanks, Alex and Pete. Cut more marina. <laughs> Time to get this set up down from our port side. Switch it around over here to starboard, and then Matt gets to do the whole process again. Lucky him.
now like lean in. <gasps> oh, Lynn Mills photo. <gasps> Hey there, everyone. We hope you enjoyed another episode of ours. And yes, we did just do the single this week because the footage I had didn't quite uh, have enough to break it into two. Again, I'm probably going back and forth based on how much I've filmed. We're pretty up to real time right now, so I don't have the luxury, unfortunately, of just like taking from multiple different projects because usually like there's one or two things that happen a week. <laughs> anyway, on to the question and answer segment from our last video. Um, which one of the biggest things was, of course, the gloves. I know I was complaining about it before, how mine were just disintegrating while we were rolling that unidirectional rope. Um, the two big things that came up about it, one was something that Matt actually practices already, which is like the double or triple gloving, putting on multiple layers and then stripping them off like once they start to go bad. Well, it's not even just necessarily about them going bad. It's when you have adhesive or you have resin on your hands and you need to touch and pick up something that doesn't, it's nice to be able to rip it off and be able to start with a clean hand and, and grab whatever you need, like the drills and stuff like that. Which is funny because that's the reason I hadn't been doing it is because I go back and forth and handle the cameras and I move them, turn them on and off. And so I just wanted to be able to like rip off a glove and then I usually like stick it in one of my work gloves, which is like dusty but clean. So that's why I, I wasn't double gloving and mine were just falling apart instantly. Um, <laughs> but I probably will start doing that in the future. And already since publishing, we've had two people bring out gloves personally, which is very kind. We've got yeah. some more coming in some the mail. Some more coming in the mail. So, so yeah, we will be set on gloves, I, I think, for a little while. But a thank little you. while. Yeah. <laughs> they are an unfortunate necessity throughout the build, so mm -hmm. we will be going through a lot. But um, yes, so thank you for the tips for double gloving. I will start doing that. Matt will probably continue doing that. And then the other big thing that came up the most was dealing with bulkheads. And anyone who watched last week's episode or read through the comments probably saw a lot of things relating to um, the other sailing channel, Parley Revival, working on his lagoon and having issues. Um, and although we don't, can't say yeah. too much about like the lagoon build, all I know we, is- We just don't have much experience with it. Yeah. Um, um, but yeah, there it does seem to be an issue with the lagoon 450s. Um, it is a lot of boat, it's a big, big, big heavy boat, um, and to have a plywood bulkhead in there. They're, they work great, they performed well on, you know, the oh, thousands, tens of thousands of prouts and, and, and um, Lagoon 380s and the 400s and all those different ones, they really have had no issues with it, um, but they are on that particular model. And so it's, it's a completely different philosophy than what we're doing with this boat. This boat is, everything is foam cord composite, um, all of the fiberglass is laid in directions of where the load path is, um, so there's no wasted extra glass in there, but it is incredibly strong, um, uh, dramatically stronger than what a plywood bulkhead is. Um, and that's one of those things, that, like I said, it gives us great confidence with it. Um, with the particular one, it is a, I think it's a 25 millimeter, so a one inch foam core with fiberglass on top of that, which is, again, really, really strong um, way to do it. It's something that uh, we've been on a lot of performance boats that are considerably larger, 50, 60 feet, and they have that same thing, the same lamination schedule um, as what we're doing on our 42 foot. So it is, it's, it's considerably overbuilt for what that is so we won't have that problem the other thing we're doing too is every single structure every component is getting fiberglass in um, so nothing is just getting glued in uh, they all have tabbing or, or um, additional glass that goes around and ties it into the holes, the bridge deck, the deck. I can the tell deck. you, I've been the one cutting the fiberglass lately for Yes, it. <laughs> so, so it is going to be a very, very stiff and strong structure, so we have no fears with that whatsoever. It's just a different way of building them. Again, it's a very time-consuming um, approach, a very uh, expensive way to build also because foam core and um, the extra fiberglass is considered more expensive than even a really nice sheet of plywood um, so it is something that you don't see on every every boat that's built because it's for, for a lot of them it's not necessary but for with a performance boat and the rigging loads we'll see it is necessary so that that's one of the things that was a criteria for this particular model or any of them that we're looking at was to be built this way 
Oh, and one thing I forgot to mention on my topic of gloves is the uh, different types of materials. Um, I think some of you thought we might be using latex, but we've actually been using nitrile gloves the entire time. Um, Which would, worked great. We've always done a lot of stuff with epoxy. Works fine with epoxy. We're seeing some effects with the styrene in the vinyl ester. That seems to be eating that a little bit more. We did actually, surprisingly, we picked up a cheap, the cheapest box, because there's none available. Like West, <laughs> West out Marine of them. All, all the, the hardware stores are out of all of the gloves. So we went to um, like a true value and just picked up something that yep, last us two days. Yep, we they're out. just vinyl gloves, the, the cheapest ones you possibly <laughs> could get. And shockingly, with the methacrylate and with the vinyl ester, they've held up way, better. way better than the nitro. Not perfect, but so, much better. So we do have that option now, um, but then we do have a bunch of more clubs that are here now, so we should be all set there. Okay. Um, but yes, those were the two biggest topics that came up, so keep these questions coming, and we hope you enjoy next week's episode where we do our first methacrylate bonding. So stay tuned for that.